Good evening. I'd like to uh, welcome each of you here this evening to our Christmas Eve service at the First Baptist Church of Weston. We have a, a wonderful group here in the, the sanctuary, and uh, I know that we have several more that are watching the live stream as well tonight. And I'm just uh, so thankful for each one of you that are here, whether you're here in the sanctuary or watching the live stream. Uh, we just... Uh, so happy you can be here and, and celebrate the birth of our Savior with us. My prayer is that you would enjoy the service, that you would enjoy the Christian fellowship here this evening, and that uh, through our worship in both word and, and in song, you would be drawn closer to our Lord. Tonight we, we gather here to again hear the message of the angels to, to share together in the wonder of the Bethlehem story. Let us listen not only with our ears this evening, but also with our hearts to the wonderful news of, of God's mercy and God's grace and to celebrate the birth of the Holy Child. Let our voices proclaim the, the glad tidings of great joy which is to all people. And as we experience the light of Christ tonight, may each of us carry that light within us as a witness to the world of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. was not a silent night. There was blood on the ground. You could hear a woman cry in the alleyway that night on the streets of David's town. And the stable was not clean And the cobblestones were cold And little Mary, full of grace With the tears upon her face Had no mother's hand to hold So they But the baby in her 
Uh, bow with me for a word of prayer. Our Father, we come to you this evening with hearts full of love, with hearts full of peace and hope as we celebrate the birth of your Son. We thank you for this time that your love and our joy can take us away, even so briefly, from our daily cares and concerns. We thank you for the birth of Jesus and the gift of salvation that comes through his life and death and resurrection. Father, I ask your blessings on all that are here this evening, whether here in the sanctuary or watching on the live stream. Father, we ask for your wisdom and guidance. We pray for your protection and ask that you would grant us peace and hope to our faithfulness to you. Lord, I pray that you would be with all those within our church family that are hurting this day. We have so many that are struggling with health issues, and I just lift them up to your loving care, trusting you, Lord, with their healing. We just pray, Father, that you would restore them back to health and to your service. Father, be with each one that has a part in this service this evening. I pray your anointing on each word that is spoken and each song that is sung. May everything accomplished be for your honor and your glory. And I ask these things in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. If we look at the second chapter of Luke, verses 1 through 14. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field 
keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. I'm sure he must have been surprised at where this road has taken him. Cause never in a million lives would he have dreamed of Bethlehem. And standing at the manger, he saw with his own eyes a message from the angel come to life. And Joseph said, why me? I'm just a simple man of trade. Why him? with all the rulers in the world. Why here, inside this table filled with hay? Why her, she's just an ordinary girl. Now I'm not one to second guess, what angels have to say. But this is such a strange way to save the world. To think of how it could have been if Jesus had come as he deserved. There would have been no Bethlehem, no lowly shepherds at his birth. But Joseph knew the reason love had to reach so far. And as he held the Savior in his arms, he must have thought, why me? I'm just a simple man of trade. Why him with all the rulers in the world? Why him? Inside this table filled with hay, why her? She's just an ordinary girl. And now I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say. But this is such a strange way to save the world. Oh, 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 oh. Now I'm not one. 
one to second guess what angels have to say. But this is such a strange way to save the world. This is such a strange way, such a strange way, a strange, strange way to save. This Christmas Eve and day, as we experience the joy of family, food, and finally opening those gifts, let's pause to meditate on the reason for the season. Together with our families and friends, make time to read, pray, and ponder the miraculous gift of Jesus. This Christmas Eve and day, we celebrate the life that is the light of all mankind. Our hearts swell with gratitude because light came down in the form of a precious baby to pierce the darkness that troubles this world. God was faithful to the promise he made to his people. He promised that he would not be left alone, chained to a hopeless fate of sin and death, but rather we would be saved by the sacrifice of a great rescuer. As the candles are lit, let us reflect on the weeks leading up to tonight. First, we reflected on the hope we have in Jesus. Second, our focus was on preparation. Third, we focused on joy. Week four, we meditated on the peace Jesus brings us. And as we light the fifth candle, the Christ candle, it reminds us of the light that shines in darkness. As you enjoy this Christmas Eve and day, we remember those who may be hurting and searching. Find a way to reach out and show love to your neighbors, co-workers, family, and friends that may be feeling uneasy or lonely this year. Remind them that we have hope because Jesus came down from heaven so we might believe. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for sending your Son to be the light that pierces the darkness that covers this world. Allow the message of your goodness and love to go out into the dark and broken spaces in our world. Open the eyes of men to be able to see you as their Savior and King. Bring revival into our churches, into the hearts of those searching from their homes, and let your peace bring needed relief to all relentless fear our world is captured by. Give each of us the strength to cling to you through it all. Fill each of our hearts and homes with joy this Christmas, and we thank you for the gift of your Son. Amen. Amen.
Looking at Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelled in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of the peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. I'm going to ask the deacons to come forward at this time. I'm not sure we may need a, someone who's been a deacon in the past to come and, and help us. Christ is the, the light of the world. And as I receive my light from the Christ candle... I'm going to share it with the deacons here this evening. And as they make their way back through the sanctuary, as they pass your pew, I, I ask that they share their light with you until all have received and, and share in the light tonight.
you receive your, your light and you hold your candle in front of you, do you ever find yourself just staring into the flame? Just kind of mesmerized by the flickering of the light? The light, it draws our attention to it. And if we're not careful, we'll, we'll find that our, our thoughts are momentarily consumed by the, the flame. During these candlelight services, as I light my own candle, I often find myself just staring into the flame. I just can't seem to help it. Here I hold one small, ordinary candle with just one small, flickering light. In of itself, my, my little flame doesn't cast much light, but for some reason, I, uh, I find the dancing flame to, to be comforting. The flame is small as it is, it casts aside the, the darkness. And regardless of how the, the darkness around me, how the darkness around us may, may grow, the light of the, this little candle never diminishes. In fact, as the darkness of the night grows more intense, the, the light of my candle becomes more prominent in the darkness. My little flame, it, it reminds me that I'm, I'm not alone. Tonight, I, I know that this flame that I hold in my hand here is it's not just a flame, but it, it represents the light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's come to me. He's mine. He's the one that gives me hope. And I know that in just a, a few short minutes, the service is going to come to a close. And like most of you, I'm, I'm going to leave here and go back to my home and family. I'll return to the, to the worries and the, the difficulties of life health issues, financial concerns, worries about our children and our, our grandchildren. I know, I know deep down that these problems are not going to go away on their own. But right now, as I, as I stare into this tiny flame, I, I realize again that I don't have to bear this alone. I'm not on my own. I'm not on my, my alone in, in my life. I just need to, to call on Him and to trust Him. I ask you to, to call on Him and to trust Him also. As I, as I look up and, and I see the light shining back through this room, this whole room of light, I wish you could, I wish you could see it from here. Each individual light, but... It's not that each one of us is an individual light just unto ourselves. It's much more than that. Each of us can, can hold the light of Jesus Christ in our life. 
As I look back uh, across the room and I, and I see your individual candles reflecting in your faces, but more importantly, I can see the light of Christ reflecting in your lives. There is a flame in our midst, the flame that moves silently uh, among us. It moves silently throughout the room, throughout the brothers and sisters of Christ until not a, not a single person is unaffected by the light. This realization, it helps me to, to better understand the, the powerful words that are contained in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. I pray tonight that that true light would be welcomed into your life. That the true light would reside in your life and fill you with love and peace that each one of us has been promised by our Savior. Please stand as, as we sing Silent Night.
Let's bow for our closing prayer. Father, our, our hearts rejoice tonight in celebration of the birth of Jesus. Peace fills our souls as we remember again the hope we have in the birth of our Savior. Tonight we proclaim Christ as the light of the world to the world. May each of us carry the light of Christ with us forevermore. And as we depart now to our individual homes, may your spirit go with us, bless and protect us, and all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Merry Christmas and God bless.